Hey y'all, we're out at the Semper Fresh Garden today. It's the last day of 2020 and we have a few projects. Well, I have a few projects I want to get done. Chris is out here every day working on projects. So um, let's get in the garden y'all. Okay, so I have a lot of projects I want to get done before the next growing season, but we've had some really cold weather here and I'm anemic, so I don't like to get out in the cold because I'm cold all the time anyway. But one of the things I did want to work on was my bean beds. Um, one of the beds have clover in it right now. Um, so that'll give that bed the nitrogen that it needs to start beans next year. But this bed where I had beans last season, um, needs to be cleaned up a little bit and I have some worm castings and I also have uh, the coffee grounds that I went through last week and poured out and have them ready to come out I left them at home but um, I do have the worm casting so let me see if I can get a little bit done today while we have decent weather it's in the mid 50s and the wind just started and the Sun just went away because we're getting rain today so I don't know how much I can actually do but let's try so we don't follow a set rule on our compost. I mean, we probably should, but um, you know, there's a lot of science to composting and we just compost things that we have in the house. There's a straw right there that got mixed in somehow. You see it? I mean, we're putting uh, organic matter in our compost um, and Chris turns it every couple of days or so. We drink a lot of tea so uh, I had mentioned before that we're not big coffee drinkers like at all. We don't drink coffee at all. So we don't typically have excess coffee grounds to bring out, but we did have some from the expired coffee uh, that our nonprofit sells. So I dumped that to bring out. We also have like materials from our um, vacuum cleaner uh, bucket that we empty into our compost. And we don't typically... <laughs> <laughs> we don't typically follow any set rule on our compost. I mean, we probably could do a little bit of a better job, but we, we're also limited on the amount of space. We also have in this area our animal waste composting area where we're going to break down um, the bedding from our chicken coop. We use the deep bedding method, so we've only cleaned it out, what, twice this uh, year? Yeah, one pile's over there. This is uh, about five or six months worth of just poop and pine shavings. Yeah, so we'll let that break down over time. And then we also have an area inside the pig pen, which is over here, um, that Chris has started like making compost inside of there. These little piggies, yeah, our new little piggies months. are, she looks like one of those sun bears. You know what I'm talking about? One of those black bears that have the gold face. Oh yeah, the, the ones from like, central China. Yeah, I don't know where they're from, but I've seen them at multiple zoos. But anyway, that's what she looks like. She, I don't know which one that is, rosemary or sage, one of the two. Here in the, oh, you one thing about this is we didn't, we never added dirt to it. So I put the, the um, uh, <laughs> pallets. <laughs> pallets. I put the pallets in. I didn't know what you were trying to say. Uh, I was I like. I put the pallets in, um, and then as I flipped it, just scooping up just whatever dirt was on the bottom as I, as I kind of turned it. And this is what's yeah, so we literally family. just started dumping our organic waste from the house here. Things that we couldn't give to the pigs or chickens um, goes here. A lot of our compost now goes to the pigs. So the, the leftovers from our um, vegetables that our chickens wouldn't necessarily eat. Um, all of that stuff now comes to the pigs. We still compost our eggshells. We boil eggs for the chickens, I mean, from the chickens for the pigs and give them the whole egg. So they're eating eggshell at that point, but I don't save the eggshell from our eggs. Y'all better get out of my garlic. Get out of my garlic, girl. Go on. What's wrong with this egg? Um... But I don't save the eggshells uh, for um, for our pigs. We just I just feed them whole boiled eggs. <laughs> this is Ava's chicken. She's a silver phoenix, a bantam. She lays little white eggs. 
She hasn't laid many though. All right, y'all, we're gonna put y'all over in the other bed. Y'all gotta go on out. Come on. Come on, uh, Chick Chick. Y'all go on out. Come on, Bok Bok. So, uh, Chris opened up the chicken coop. Um, you can see where the coop opens up here. For them to be able to come out so um this is the space that we're having them turn this is where we're putting our pumpkins and our gourds next year and he has um opened up the coop here for them to come in and we're gonna spread some uh, food for them here some feed for them to come in but this is the space i'm gonna work on right now um, so I had an experiment that I did last year with the beans where I had planted some in these biodegradable pods. You can see that they are not biodegradable. Do not recommend at all. Um, I was hoping that these would have, that these would have broken down, but they did not. So I'm going to have to pull them out, unfortunately. And then I'm going to add some worm castings here. Now, it did not change the way that these, growing them this way did not change the way that the beans grew themselves. You typically don't want to start beans um, in a greenhouse or without just direct sowing them because they don't like for their roots to be disturbed. However, um, the... You know, I was just, this year was about experimentation for me since I knew that we had so much time for me to do some research and to actually record stuff and remember things in my journal. So the only downside to this process as at this point is that these roots are not going to break down in the soil like I wanted them to. This side will because I did not plant, I only planted three rows with the biodegradable pods, biodegradable pods. And I'll leave the roots in here so when they break down over the next couple more months they will release that nitrogen in but i have some um earthworm castings that i'm going to put in here and then we're going to put some compost over the soil to prepare this bed and this bed now this one still has this is going to be beans as well next year this one still has some remnants of some stuff i planted so i may just leave this one as is right now as you can see the dirt is really rich so we've still got amazing soil here uh, over here where our chickens are this is I mean all of this is clay that's why we use raised beds so all of this is clay you can see that this dirt which we added in from out in that area um, is not the same it does not have the compost. It does not have the nutrients in it. So we're hopeful that these chickens will help us fix that problem. And so will our pigs. So our pigs are currently turning those spaces for us that we could potentially plant on. Right now we don't really have plans to do that. Um, but you know, so that's kind of, that's kind of what we have going on right now. And you can see that even the dirt here, this is where our pumpkins were last year. I mean, it's all great. We've worked really hard to keep our soil um, balanced. We will add more compost in here. As you can see, we have plenty more space. This area next year is going to have uh, tomatoes, some cucumbers that'll be growing up over arch trellis here, and some flowers. That's the plan for this soil. I'm doing some crop rotating this year, um, which I haven't done in the past on a lot of different things. Uh, what are these in here? These are eggs. No, these might just be leftover tomatoes. Yeah, I was about to say. 
These are eggs from my bantam hens, but they're not. They are leftover tomatoes. I thought at first that they were potatoes. <laughs> anyway, so we still have some um, straightening up to do um, in the garden. Have lots to do. We're supposed to have a pretty mild January. So my goal for January 2021 is to get things ready for things that I'm gonna be planting in March. And in February, I'm gonna be focused more on starting my seedlings and the things that I'm gonna be working on in the garden. Now the majority of my um, February plan, like I said, is just to get my seedlings started. Um, I already have the garden mapped out of what I'm actually going to plant, but I have so many varieties of tomatoes and so many varieties of squash that I really have to find out and nail down which ones I'm actually gonna grow. I may start seeds for them all and do like I did last year and give away the excess seeds, um, seedlings that I have. Um, I did that last year, the extra seedlings the extra plants that I had um, after I had planted everything in my garden, I put them at the end of my driveway and put a sign that said free and I asked for a donation for Simper Canine and I got enough donations in to pay for all of our seeds last year with some left over. So really I was able to offset a lot of our growing costs. And this year my goal in the garden is to produce as much food as I can in the space that we have. I think we have in this garden with the raised beds, and the end ground component there, I think we have 1,200 square feet of growing space. And in the high tunnel with just the beds, there we have two four by 36 raised beds in there. And then we have about 20 foot by 40 foot. We have two, I mean by 40, 20 by 40, 20 by four foot. We have two of those spaces in the front. We are gonna put some, um, tables in there for seedlings um, to keep them protected while it's still cold and we're doing them. Another question that I've gotten is why we have so much space in between our beds. And the reason is our nonprofit, we help disabled veterans and their families. And there are times that we have veterans who are training with us for their service dog training that are um, not mobile independently so they are in a wheelchair and most of them have a motorized wheelchair so um, that gives them enough space to navigate the garden because we want everyone to be able to enjoy it so that's one of the reasons why we have a wider space here in the high tunnel it is more narrow and we will have other gardening areas that are not handicap accessible but this main component of the garden is important for us to keep it handicap accessible for that reason. Okay, let's get these biodegradable pods out. I'm hesitant to even add them in the compost, but I kind of want to just to see how long it actually takes them to break down. I might just sit them to the side of the, com of the compost and let Chris decide what he wants to do. Also right behind uh, the chicken coop or beside it, uh, we also have our pig pen. So we have them together here and our goal is that when we it move is. the pigs over to another pen, we will be putting the chickens in behind them, I guess. I don't know. That's what Chris wants to do. Then we've got the babies right here. I don't like that mud. You don't like that mud? What are they doing? Um, sniffing the mud. They're sniffing the mud? Yeah. Trying to eat food. They're rutting around and they're rooting around. And that's what I put it there for, so. They like it. <laughs> yeah. It what looks it so too. gross, on it? Look at Blondie's beard and Basil. <laughs> Woo wee. <laughs> Just like any other farm animal, as soon as you replace their water with fresh, clear water, they step in it and roll in it to get it muddy. Mm -hmm. Well, they look happy in that. Okay, y'all, um, the rain is about to come in and it's New Year's Eve, so I've got to get to the grocery store before everybody else gets there. And um, anyway, we're going to be out here Saturday because there's a spot back over here where we're building Abram a 
tree house. Even though Chris says that's gonna be his hunting stand, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We also got a zip line on uh, Amazon deal days. Uh, it was a lightning deal that we got on Christmas Eve or something. So it was delivered and we wanna get that set up too because I've always wanted the kids to have a tree house with a zip line because I was always supposed to have one and my daddy wouldn't build us a zip line because he said they were too dangerous. So I'm gonna give my kids the childhood that my daddy told me I couldn't have no zip line or pigs and look what we got. Anyway, uh, I do love my dad though. I know that he might be watching this, so I love you daddy. Um, anyway, so we're in and out 2020, or at least I am. Chris is staying out here to work on projects and I'm um, looking forward to 2021. So happy new year, y'all.